Thank you for tuning into this reflection today. My name is Mary Catherine Meek, and I'm the pastoral associate here at Ascension Parish in Oak Park. And I'm very happy to share with you some of my thoughts related to the month of October, and specifically in relation to our second reading for this 29th century, 29th century, 29th Sunday in ordinary time. The beginning of Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Paul, Sylvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love and endurance in hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father, knowing, brothers and sisters loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As a young child, I lived in the Austin area of Chicago and attended St. Lucy School. St. Lucy Church had six, what appeared monumental to me, large statues of saints, the Blessed Mother, St. Joseph, St. Lucy, St. Francis of Assisi, St. Therese of Lisieux, the Little Flower, and St. Anthony of Padua. I was fascinated by their size. Their presence just filled the small church with a sense of holiness. In an alcove, there was also a statue of the Sacred Heart with Jesus seeming to reach out in tenderness to any and all who came to pray and ask his intercession. From fifth to eighth grade, our Friday afternoons had the same pattern. Choir practice in church and then back to our classroom for Friday afternoon time, also known as Sister Didn't Teach on Friday Afternoons. There, a weekly reader was distributed, which covered some of the world news at our level and introduced a variety of topics we never seemed to cover in school. And then, one by one, each person had to get up and give a one-minute memorized speech to the class. Sister would note your topic in the ever-present gradebook, so there was no chance of a repeat during the course of the year. As Catholic school students in the 50s and 60s, most of us had our St. Joseph or St. Andrew daily missiles. The missal included a brief outline of the saint of the day's life. Some of us would frantically search our missal for a quick saint to memorize during Friday lunch break for our speech. Week after week, I was constantly reminded in these speeches of my classmates by my classmates of the faithfulness and acts of love, these holy men and women who had preceded me in this Catholic faith, faith demonstrated. We find ourselves right now smack dab in the middle of October. For me, one of the preeminent times of the year for any Catholic attuned to the sanctoral cycle of feast days. The month begins with the feast of St. Teresa of Lisieux a favorite of many and a relatively new saint and doctor of the church who taught us, my call is love. And she used her little way to find her path to heaven. And the month concludes with the vigil of all saints when we remember all those joined in heaven, most not formally recognized here on earth, but who lived their lives of love and service. When I look at the month of October in particular, I am struck by the number of amazing saints we have gathered in these 31 days. As I mentioned, October 1st, St. Teresa the Child Jesus. October 2nd is the Feast of the Guardian Angels. And although they're not technically saints, they certainly do every effort they can to help each of us live out that call that we were chosen to be saints, lives of holiness. October 3rd is St. Mother Theodore Guerin, who is the founders of St. Mary of the Woods College in Indiana and the Providence Sisters here in North America. 
one of her favorite sayings to her sisters was, have confidence in the providence that so far has never failed us. With Jesus, what shall we have to fear? October 4th, St. Francis of Assisi, no more needs to be said about him. October 5th, St. Mary Faustina, she shared her revelations from Jesus and brought us the understanding of divine mercy. Also on this day, we celebrate the feast of Blessed Francis Xavier Silos, a redemptorist priest who was a great healer in his time and also was a great preacher on the faithful love and mercy of God. On October 11th, one of my personal heroes, Pope St. John XXIII, a true reformer who trusted the Holy Spirit to guide the church in new beginnings with the calling of the Second Vatican Council. On October 15th, another woman, doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who spent a great deal of her life reforming her religious order of the time. On October 16th, we celebrate St. Margaret Mary Alacoque, who promoted the image of the Sacred Heart. On October 18th, St. Luke, the Evangelist. On October 19th, the North American Martyrs, St. Isaac Job, St. John Brebeuf, and Companions. On October 22nd, another saint, familiar and, and a favorite of so many, Pope St. John Paul II. And finally, on October 28th, we felt, celebrate the feast of St. Simon and Jude, apostles, which are depicted as part of the whole group here. We have saints in October from the first century Christianity to the 21st century, quite a stretch. And whereas some of the lives they lived, especially those who lived centuries ago, seem very different from our own, the virtues they displayed, their response to the call, and the lived examples of faith, hope, and love are always to be admired and emulated. They bring to life the words Paul wrote to the Thessalonians so many centuries ago. I'm taping this reflection in advance of October 17th and 18th to make Juliet's and David's life a little less frenetic in getting it posted to the website, etc. So, I, my colleagues on staff, and many of you in the parish are in the midst of grieving our very dear friend, colleague, and parishioner, Jim Wojcik. Jim, a fixture in our midst, endeared himself to all of us who work in any of the liturgical ministries or who came to mass each weekend. As a staff person, Jim could always be relied upon to not only be responsible for all of his own duties, but would often help others on staff out with some of theirs. His devotion to our church space to provide a sense of holiness, prayerfulness, beauty, and peace was a magnificent contribution to our parish. He will be sorely missed. And whereas technically we will remember him in a special way on the Feast of All Souls this year, I truly believe we will also be celebrating him among those anonymous ones in heaven on All Saints. I would invite you now to just pause and bring to mind someone in your own family or a friend who has passed on, someone you view as a saint and let us bow our heads and pray for a moment in silence. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. And I'd like to conclude with the prayer that you can find in your Living the Word book at the end of the study for this Sunday's readings. Lord, the effort to be true to you requires continual effort. Thank you that we do not walk alone. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the times when you have strengthened our weak knees and redirected our gaze on this hard road of pilgrimage. God of glory, when we see you face to face, the sweat and the struggle will fade away. Sovereign Lord, you alone are our source and our summit, for all the earth belongs to you. Amen. And I'd like to conclude, Jim loved to sing. He was in the choirs and um, at his uh, funeral this last week, one of the readings was uh, the one that we hear heard last Sunday, uh, the first reading on the, on the feast on this mountain. And this, um, this one verse of dwellers in the holy city refers to that very thing. Saints around the banquet gathered, claim him now as next of kin. Lead him to the family table. Let the feast of joy begin. Friends at God's own table seated, let the 